From the time she was a child, Claire wanted to own her own beauty brand. Her dream turned to reality when she launched her skincare brand, Olive, four years ago. It's important to know what problem your product is solving. Even though I came from a skincare background, um, a lot of things we had back then were in-house. So for me to start my brand from scratch, um, you know, it was a, a very big journey from sourcing ingredients, um, looking for the best um, labs to work with, um, sourcing for the best bottles out there from South Korea, doing R&D, um, doing testing. Getting the business off the ground was no easy feat. I say the whole journey took me more than two years before launching. So, you know, when, when you feel you're ready to launch and then maybe the, you find out, oh, the texture doesn't work so well here, then sometimes it's like back to the drawing block again, yeah, to redo and then to relaunch. While the skincare industry is largely female-centric, for young women entrepreneurs like Claire, gender biases still remain. I've gone into meetings with my male colleagues before, so the, the people that we met with, they, they know that I'm the founder. But even after talking to myself and the colleague, maybe because they are guys, they, they end up addressing my male colleague more. So, but I've, I've just come to let it pass. I mean, what's most important is, you know, don't just think about the discrimination. Rachel is the second-generation business owner of Royal Insignia. Her immediate challenge is to ensure that the business her father founded some two decades ago is able to keep up with the times. We are in a business where it's very heavy on craftsmanship. It's very heavy on the very romantic notion of gift-giving. Um, and that's all good with the current generation of monarchs. But with, when the younger generation takes over all these um, as sultans, as kings, right, would they still value this notion of gift giving, you know, or more specifically, bespoke gift giving? We're not so sure, you know, and that's why, in order to prep ourselves for that imminent change, we have diversified our business into other industries like chocolate. Just like Claire, Rachel also has to deal with gender biases. One of the challenges I face is that the definition of a good leader is often defined in very masculine terms. But at the same time, we have to conform to female stereotypes. So what do I mean? So if I'm too soft on my stuff, uh, if, if yeah, I'm, defined, I'm seen as a weak manager. And if I'm too hard-nosed on them, I'm extremely unlikable and unreasonable. Women aspiring to start their own businesses may also face gender discrimination when trying to raise capital. Female-led startups get something like 3% of, of, of VC funding. Um, it's, it's, it's hard um, for female-led businesses to scale. There is certain um, underlying subconscious gender bias towards funding women startups, um, certain cultural expectations in terms of gender uh, and the roles of women in, in the home and in the workplace um, that still remain. To help women marry both work and family commitments, Elaine set up Treehouse, an integrated co-lifestyle space for working parents and their families. I'm a doctor by profession, I do palliative care, but um, I've also, I'm also an entrepreneur. A big part of why we've created um, Treehouse, which is the business that I started. It's to allow, to change the workplace such that women are able to still care for their families and prioritise families while, while being in the workplace and having a career. Singapore has a lively entrepreneurial scene. However, the entrepreneurial activity rate for women compared to men is about half, according to the 2019 MasterCard Index of Women Entrepreneurs. That gap gave Elaine the idea for another venture. So me and my co-founder started a non-profit social enterprise called CRIP, which stands for Creating Responsible and Innovative Businesses, that empowers women to become successful entrepreneurs. I think an access to networks has also traditionally been an issue where 
business networks are, are quite male dominated and um, that is something that we've also tried to change with Crib. Fellow Crib member and entrepreneur Aisha is also doing her part to narrow the gender gap, but in a field that she is passionate about, AI. I'm CEO of Addo AI. It's an artificial intelligence solutions firm headquartered in Singapore. Historically, women have not been in computer science or statistics or data science. This has been unfortunate. There was some kind of cultural bias that women were not as well suited to it. The result has been that now, at very senior levels, we don't see enough role models. And this has a perverse effect of discouraging younger women, who now are kind of interested and are curious, from coming into the field. So it's changing slowly. To encourage younger women to take up tech-related roles in the future, Aisha set up 21C Girls, a charity that provides free coding and artificial intelligence classes to girls in Singapore. I would highly encourage every woman to take a basics in data science and artificial intelligence course. Um, you will need this. You don't need to become a data scientist or a coder, but you will end up having to work with somebody who needs to use data to improve your business. So don't lose your confidence. Go out there, acquire some of the skills, and then you'll see that you can walk into any boardroom, raise any funds you want, and also build the business of your dreams. From my own experience, um, one piece of advice to women entrepreneur, it is to just take that first step, to just be bold and take that first step. If you have a business dream, just take that first step. It may just be as simple as doing a little bit of research, picking up the phone and calling somebody you know uh, to ask a little bit more. But just take that first step forward and the next step and the next step and for me, I've, I've just gone, not just, just taken one step at a time and looked back and realised that I've built this business through those small little steps that I've taken.